Welcome back everyone to our second video about hyperbolic functions. If you haven't checked out our intro video, make sure you go back and look at our intro to hyperbolic functions, what they are, where they've come from, some of the definitions of those. We've got some of them here. Uh, remember in our intro video, we said that in the same way with the circular functions, sine and cosine, we have the other four basic trigonometric functions based on sine and cosine and some ratios of those. With hyperbolic functions, if you recall, we were defining hyperbolic tangent hyperbolic cotangent, hyperbolic secant, and hyperbolic cosecant in the same way with these same ratios that we have with the circular functions. So in this video we're going to look at discovering some identities and show how some of these identities are true and how you might get the formulas for these. So if we want to find an exponential definition for one of the other functions, say hyperbolic secant, then we'll depend on the exponential definitions of either hyperbolic cosine or hyperbolic sine or some combination of the two. So you might think, well, regular secant um, is the reciprocal of the usual cosine function, and it's true in hyperbolic functions. So the hyperbolic secant function, if you remember, is the reciprocal of the cosh function the hyperbolic cosine function. And so the idea is if I want a definition for hyperbolic secant, then I would just simply plug in my exponential definition for hyperbolic cosine for cosh. So if we do one over e to the x plus e to the minus x over two, and we have a fraction on the bottom of a fraction there. So if I multiply the top and the bottom by two, then I get rid of my fraction on the bottom there and we'll get something that looks like 2 over just simply e to the x plus e to the negative x. Now a formula list you may look at or an instructor of yours may look at this and say we don't want any negative exponents on the bottom of a fraction. So they may go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by e to the x to get rid of that negative exponent. We can do that because e to the x is never zero, so that's an okay thing. We're not worrying about multiplying the top and bottom of the fraction by zero and not realizing it. So we would get 2e to the x on top. e to the x, if we think of distributing on the bottom, would give us e to the x plus x, which would be e to the 2x. And then e to the x times e to the negative x, x plus negative x would give us an exponent of 0, and e to the 0 would be 1. So we get an exponential definition here that's cleaned up a little bit uh, for hyperbolic secant of x. If we do another one, similarly for tangent, hyperbolic tangent, so if we have that tanch of x, or the hyperbolic tangent of x, is equal to cinch of x over cosh of x, well, we can do a similar thing and just plug in the definitions to this ratio that we know. So we would have e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 for the cinch. And for cosh, in the denominator, we would have e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Again, if I have a fraction and a fraction on the top and the bottom, we'll want to get rid of that. We can do that in one step by multiplying top and bottom by 2 here. That will get rid of the over 2 parts. So we will get e to the x minus e to the negative x over, and then this here, the 2 reduces as well, e to the x plus e to the negative x. A similar thing may happen where we want to get rid of the negative exponent in the denominator, and so we go ahead and multiply the top and bottom here by e to the x again, doing the same thing to the top and the bottom, perfectly fine, we're multiplying by something that's not zero, and so we would get e to the 2x minus, this would become e to the zero, which is one, and then on the bottom, multiplying, we would get e to the 2x plus e to the zero, which would be one. So we get a uh, version of the hyperbolic tangent function uh, with no negative exponents there. A different kind of working with identities, uh, we might want to prove some sort of an identity with hyperbolic functions, that might be something we encounter. Uh, so here we're going to prove that cinch of 2x is equal to 2 times cinch x times cosh x. So you notice here we have a double angle formula. Here these are just single angles, just an x in cinch and cosh. This is very similar to the idea of the circular functions. We have um, an identical sine of 2x equals 2 sine x cosine x. So this might be an identity if you're working with hyperbolic functions that you see somewhat early on, right? So we're going to prove this version. 
cinch of 2x just says, take the cinch exponential definition and put 2x in wherever x is. So we're going to use this definition here. Cinch of 2x then would be e to the 2x minus e to the negative 2x over 2 using this definition, but in place of x, we're just putting 2x. Over here, we just have 2 times cinch x, which is the definition with the usual x in there. So e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 times the cosh x usual function there, e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. Okay, so we might notice a couple of things. First of all, I'll reduce uh, one of the 2's there on the bottom. So this is going to give us e to the x minus e to the negative x quantity times e to the x plus e to the negative x quantity, and all of that will be over 2. If we go ahead and distribute, then we'll get uh, e to the x times e to the x, so that will be e to the 2x. If we get um, the outside terms multiplying e to the x times e to the negative x, the exponents would add to be 0 there. Right, so we will actually get plus 1. So if I then distribute this negative e to the negative x term, we'll get uh, negative times a positive is negative, and then e to the negative x times e to the x, add the exponents, you would get 0, e to the 0. So minus e to the 0 will be minus 1. And then the last term times the last term, negative times a positive will be negative. And I get e to the negative x times e to the negative x, add the exponents, we'll get e to the negative 2x. All of that will be over 2, and I think we can see what happens, right? We have this plus 1, minus 1, that's going to add up to 0. So we will get e to the 2x minus e to the negative 2x all over 2. And now hopefully we can see we've got this definition for cinch of 2x matches our simplified definition of 2 cinch x cosh x. All right, let's do another one of these. We want to prove this identity that looks very similar to a Pythagorean identity from circular trig functions, right? We know from circular trig functions that the cosine squared of something plus the sine squared of that something is supposed to give us one. So there are some differences between circular and hyperbolic functions. Some of the identities will look the same and some of them will look a bit different. This one looks a bit different because we have minus here. And you might notice thinking about this as a hyperbolic function, this looks somewhat similar to like an x squared minus y squared equals one, which is what hyperbolic functions are based off of, we mentioned in our intro video. So if we plug in our exponential definitions, that might give us a way to prove this just like before. So we'll use e to the x, plus e to the negative x all over 2. Now remember, this notation cosh squared x really means we're taking all of cosh x and we're squaring it. Something for trig functions and for hyperbolic functions, we put the square on the actual function itself rather than on the x, so it doesn't look like that we're squaring the x, but we're actually squaring all of the cosh x idea. So we're going to take this cosh x and square it minus, so this is really cinch of x all squared, so that would be e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 all squared equal to 1. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do some distributing here. I'm going to write out two copies. I'm going to go ahead and at least square the 2 on the bottom, so we can say e to the x plus e to the negative x, uh, e to the x plus e to the negative x. All of that certainly over 4, 2 times 2 on the bottom, minus, and then we'll get uh, e to the x minus e to the negative x times e to the x minus e to the negative x. That will all be over 4 as well. And that's supposed to equal 1. Okay, we're going to do the distributing now on top, working it out the similar way. e to the x times e to the x is going to give us e to the 2x. Outside terms, e to the x times e to the negative x would be e to the 0, which is 1. Distributing e to the negative x times e to the x, that would be e to the 0, which is another plus 1. 
and then e to the negative x times e to the negative x is going to give us e to the negative 2x if we add those exponents together. I'll put that in parentheses for now. Uh, reason because I have a minus here, so I'm going to subtract everything in this second fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and write it this way. Uh, let's distribute the second stuff, right? Similar, e to the x times e to the x is e to the 2x. e to the x outside terms times negative e to the negative x, that would be negative and then that would also give me e to the 0 for those terms. That would be a 1. A similar thing is going to happen with the inside terms. I get a negative times a positive, and then I get e to the negative x times e to the x, which would be e to the 0, which is 1 again. Negative times a negative for the last terms. That would be a positive. And then e to the negative x times e to the negative x. Add the exponents e to the negative 2x there. And everything here, since it's all over 4, I'm just going to write it as one fraction. Okay, so I think we might start to see, if we look here, what's going to happen. If we look, we notice I have e to the 2x, think through the minus, minus e to the 2x. These terms, e to the 2x minus e to the 2x, will become zero. Uh, similar with the other exponential, I have e to the negative 2x minus e to the negative 2x. So we will end up having zero with these. If you notice what's left, here I have 2 in the first set of parentheses left, minus, and then here I have a negative 2 in the second set of parentheses over 4 gives us 1. And sure enough, right, this is going to be 4 on top, 4 on the bottom, so we will get that these two things are the same. And if we can show that they're both equal 1, then we have proved this identity. All right, we have a couple of other videos on hyperbolic functions. Our next one deals with derivatives and derivative formulas and where they come from for hyperbolic functions. Check that out. We'll see you in the next video.